Before we start, so just want to welcome everybody, whoever's online. Um, I'm not sure where this is going to go or how we're going to do this. And I don't really have a formal agenda, but I think it's just important for everybody just to get together. Let's have a chat about where we are, share a few experiences, any issues, we can help each other. Um, I really just want to keep it simple. I mean, there's been so much happening there at the moment in regard to, uh, well, probably goes without saying, but um, just to really start, this has been a National Council sort of initiative, and we're going to try to run this on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the junior that we sort of mentioned. And really just to see where, you know, people do need help, what kind of help we do need. Um, once again, just the sharing of experiences and uh, just really, I suppose it's a, a health and well-being thing for the profession, but also I'm just also aware of everybody's uh, mental health as well, because it does affect us. There is a human element to all this, um, away from architecture. And uh, so if we can all talk amongst each other. And I think, Julia, you framed it as a fire, a fireside chat, and uh, I'd like to probably keep it to that if we can. I'll, I'll probably start the conversation rolling in terms of what we're doing as a practice. We're based in Adelaide. Uh, we do have a small studio in Sydney and sort of working across the country as well. Sydney as well. So we have about 16 people. I also you know, teach at the university one day a week. Um, so we've had to go into sort of remote, um, I suppose, communication from that. We first, in terms of the office, we had our first Zoom studio yesterday, which is an exercise in itself, but it worked brilliantly. And so we're all adapting, especially my generation, I've got to say, in terms of how this all works. So what we've done is we have uh, probably, I don't know, 30% of our people offside at the moment working from home. Um, we've got a few more to go in um, working from home, I suppose, over the next few days. We've actually just sat down with everybody on a one-to-one -one basis and just you know, spoken about what they want to do, given everybody the flexibility. Um, I think it's inevitable that we will all work remotely. Interestingly enough, a few have actually decided to sort of stay in the studio and sort of come in as, as required. Um, now, you know, I suppose we're very fortunate because, you know, Every one of our studio desks is about four metres long, and this is the way the office was designed. So we're very fortunate in having that, that space. In terms of how we're strategising, I don't want to go into the IT component because I'm not a real tech head. I'll leave that to the others. But I've got to say one thing we did do in terms of basic experience, we just kept it really simple. And I'm just using the analogy of dialing into the VPN taking out a file that you're working on and putting it straight, at the end of the day, putting it straight back into the server. Um, the size of our practice, if the server goes down, we're in serious trouble. So it's no different than having, you know, the little folder on your desk to use my uh, generational language, taking it out, putting it on your desk, working and returning at the end of the day. So that's part of just us keeping everything really, really simple. The human communication of it in person with everybody, keeping everybody updated, etc. And also in terms of what's happening with our business um, has been valued by everybody in, in our small group. And also, you know, we've also just had a directive in terms of emails can be construed in many ways in, in these difficult times. So we're encouraging everybody to speak on the phone, speak to people. It's a wonderful attribution. And that seems to have been working really well from, you know, people on site to people working at home. And uh, also, you know, if you want to bring your kids that are working home into the conversation, feel free to do that. So I suppose, you know, it's, it's actually a humanising experiment for us. Um, not that we weren't human before, but really just, you know, the architecture has become part of the business. The design component probably you know, it's, it's almost secondary to what we do. So I've sort of started that. There's another million things that I could probably say, but I'd like to sort of just hear what everybody else has to say. And I think, you know, just taking dot points, sharing it, and just keep it all sort of lighthearted. So that's me. And feel free for anybody to sort of just come in. If you unmute and just sort of share, I think that would be great. So.
Nicolette, you just posted a question. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, look, um, I guess at the moment we've had a few queries in the SA chapter office, so I'm the uh, ED for South Australia, but I have a background in architectural practice and people are coming to me and going, how should I run my site visits? Um, you know, should I be saying we can't do them? If we don't do them, how do we keep our projects going? Um, anybody, has anyone got a methodology they've worked out that they want to share? You know, some u butte thing that's setting the world on fire? <laughs> No? Um, sorry, I'm here, Percy uh, from the WP. Um, I think at the moment uh, we were having that, that, uh, that was why that we need to as the sense of that going. Um, how we have managed this is through, uh, again, the conference, like the, the foreman on site has uh, as a mobile phone that if he has any queries in his um, face or, or whatever um, system we might have. Um, and we're still a little bit uh, complete how we manage like a proper section. Uh, we are putting it onto the builder just uh, to ensure that they uh, there is a um, a processing list for us for, for safely uh, go on site and do our inspections. Um, some people have talked about maybe do it um, at, at four o'clock where is. Um, um, all the trades are gone, um, but yeah, that opens the the issue of uh, long distance when you have to travel a couple of hours to to be there. So, um, so yeah, that long run and basically uh, working on the uh, um, to actually create all the first place to actually make the construction environment on site uh, safe for us to build. Tony, it's Claire here. <clears throat> Claire Cousins, are you getting all that clearly? I'm, it might be just my reception. I was going to be getting every second word. No, I was actually yeah, getting the same. I was just about uh, to say that. So. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Is the person, I didn't, do you want to try again? I just, I, I thought it might have been my reception, but maybe try it again. Sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. Uh, um, so yeah, basically we are doing day-to-day uh, -day issues. Uh, if there is an issue on the site um, that could be uh, addressed um, through through the phone, the foremans um, have uh, smartphones these days. So uh, it has happened that we just um, the foreman on site is just screen uh, sharing, oh no, sorry, just being what's happening in the communication there. Um, as for uh, formal side visits, we are uh, requesting the, the builders um, on site to create a, um, a process and uh, that works with their health and safety and then communicate that back to us. It is their responsibility to, to keep the, the site. Um, it, it is their site, so um, we can to, to put guidelines in how we're going to achieve um, some, some of them have said that to do it at 4 p.m. Uh, after 4 p.m. when the, uh, the trees are, are offside, uh, which yeah, put in each good master site, and especially those um, sites that we need to um, do. Um, obviously, that not a consequence of the methods um, have been, um, yeah. I don't know if it's working. Tony, are you getting any? I'm not getting any of that. No, I'm getting every second or third. Sorry, it might not be a good. Sorry, yeah, whoever that I can't. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Just might be your connection. Do, do Sorry, you want to send this? Can you hear me better? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Percy, what Percy was going to say. Sorry, it's Kelly from DWP as well. Hi, They're... much clearer. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, he's. What's basically happening is we're trying to put it back on the builders because it's their responsibility to obviously keep a safe site. So they're anywhere possible, it's done via phone. If there are any issues, potentially you could do video chat with them um, and then take it day by day. 
and if there needs to be a site visit, to set it up late afternoon around, say, 4 o'clock when most tradies and sub the subbies have all been, they're all off-site, basically. So there's very limited people there to interact with. Thanks, Kelly. That's great. And thank you, Damien, too. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to say from our side, we've, we've actually found um, sites very, very responsive um, and without sort of breaking barriers in regard to, you know, their responsibility or my responsibility, I think it's, you know, even going out and starting to be probably four different angles of a, of a problem and referring it back, it's not to be kind of working. Um, so that's, uh, if, I can, if I can offer that as well. It's clear here. One of the challenges, I suppose, we've been working through with, we've got four current or five sites. One has shut down because it was an interior fit out. It was too close for everybody to work. But um, I think the thing we've been getting our four builders to work through at the moment is just really pre preparation because I think something just came through to me this morning that um, someone's partner is in government and said Victoria could be shutting us, making an announcement as soon as today and have give only between 12 and 48 hours. 48 hours notice for it to come into effect and so I suppose we've just been working through what the process and protocols that the builders have got in place all of them have been really responsive with kind of separation and proximity you know um, of people working together I think domestic is much easier than con commercial obviously there's a lot more people and even traveling up on Ali Max is a problem um, but I think the thing that I'm supposed I suppose I'm trying to get in place early uh, and negotiating with our clients is the fact that the ABIC contract doesn't actually really have a clause that relates to this and really puts the pressure back onto the builder that they're, they're eligible to claim an EOT, but not one that not one with costs. Um, and even I noticed the South Australian um, chapter put a, a kind of little prac note out on it the other day to say that it wouldn't be with costs. But the challenge is none of this is really the builder's fault nor the client's fault. And so we're trying to go about it in a kind of very... Um, equitable manner to try and say to the clients look here are the very basic kind of extension costs of extending insurance policies kind of site higher costs um, and sort of trying to negotiate up front whether the parties can share those costs we've got builders actually calling a lot of their um, hire companies and seeing whether they'll stand down the higher costs um, and not continue to charge in the shutdown period so I think there's a lot of um, kind of goodwill with those kind of companies that are prepared to do that um, but I, I suppose what I'm trying to avoid is a kind of uh, the arguments in three months' time when people are further stressed or, or stretched. And if we can try and get that kind of agreement up front um, is probably a bit more proactive and more likely to be done while everyone's kind of trying to work collaboratively. The other one is even like how you count the, the EOTs. We've been looking at um, even giving uh, builders a kind of day to close the site and that's that's included in the EOT and even a kind of ramp up of three to five days when the when the shutdown period is lifted because it might be that it's lifted on a Sunday night the builders aren't necessarily going to be able to mobilize on the Monday it might take them a couple of days to get their staff and supply chains back in order so I suppose it's just trying to have those kind of upfront conversations to keep everyone informed and that everyone's doing the best that they can. Thanks Claire. Um Certainly the advice we've been given is just to make sure all your recording of what's happening on site is, is pretty well spot on. So just keep that fairly well up to date, like you just mentioned, Claire. Because um, in terms of from a legal perspective, also don't offer any legal interpretation of the contract because we're not experts in it and this really just goes into a completely different sphere altogether in terms of how it's resolution. But the record keeping of actually what's happening and keeping in contact with site every day is going to become more and more important and, uh, until the whole thing unfolds. Yeah, certainly in my experience, the, the disputes come, I think Claire's, what you've been saying is fantastic and what Tony said is great because once you've got to that point where things are stressed and people aren't talking nicely to each other, it's too late to try and unravel the mess. It's really important that we get people while we're all fresh and relatively, you know, sort of, well, we're still relatively normal compared to where we may end up being. So um, the more we can get defined and agreed and worked out now while people are still being civilised is um, going to be to our favour further down the track. Um, 
Does anybody else want to sort of join in the conversation in regard to where they may need some help and in, the, in these forums, who will be best sort of to bring in to, uh, to get some advice? I know this is sort of unfolding uh, day by day and so it might be completely shut down, as Claire said, by the end of the day or by tomorrow. Um, and we'll just keep continuously feeding it into it. But, you know, it'd be valuable to sort of hear from what other people are experiencing as well. Um, I do know that Tristan just sort of on the uh, on the chat as well in terms of the mental health aspect. We did have, you know, we have two TVs virtually running nonstop in the background in, in our studio. It's just sort of part of the, you know, everything that's, that's happening. And But we did have some notions coming back through. It's like, guys, please turn the TV off because it's like, in our brains 24 hours a day. So we've got cooking um, shows running through at the moment, which is sort of just making some great fun as well. So, and it just relaxes everybody as well, but it is really, really important because the information overload in terms of everything that's happening is just, and you know, you go home at night and you get family stresses and everything else. So yeah, mental health in this case is really, really important. We've also noticed that with the students um, in terms of how we handle that time. Well, it would be great, Tony, it's clear again, to hear from people as to how they've managed kind of relocating their offices to home. I mean, we're a practice of 11 at the moment. So we've still got two in the office because they choose to stay in the office. They live walking distance and they're at one end of the office away from each other. It's been quite helpful because we've, we've got to put a planning permit in and who still, City of Yarra still want printed A3 submissions. They don't want emails. So we've got someone that can kind of do, you know, printouts and sort of post things for us if we need to. But obviously if there's a full shutdown, they're prepared to move home. One of the things we've found to be really good is, I suppose because I've got a number of staff that do live alone, is we've been having 9 a.m. Zoom meetings each morning. It's for like five or ten minutes. It's more of a mental health check and an opportunity for us to all have a bit of a chat in the morning. Um, on Mondays, we, it's a bit of an office sort of tradition. We often do this kind of quiz out of the newspaper, more so sort of the office than me. But um, So we do the super quiz at lunchtime on a Monday now by Zoom. And then on Fridays last week, we had a kind of five o'clock BYO drinks. Um, you know, you had a cup of water or a cup of tea or a glass of wine. And so, again, just I, I suppose it's it's a way of kind of touching base with everyone because we're so used to being in a kind of close knit studio, but really an opportunity that people, a lot of people have got partners who are still going into what the workplace. So they're literally sitting in their home office all day by themselves day in, day out. And I think it's, um, it's going to be a long haul. So it's, it's just been interesting in trying to get how everyone wants to kind of stay connected and um, have a bit of light relief around your work day. Um, look, just from our perspective, and I've got I've got three offices in three states, and it's it, we've found and we've had 50-50 on the the people who want to go home. We tried that whole um, we'll do staff A and staff B, um, and we've gone through. We, we're using Zoom to connect on a daily basis, as I think as clear you were just saying. So we do a nine o'clock meet with everybody in the office across uh, across the entire um, entire three offices, and just make sure people are up and ready to go. We, we're trying to get them to to those that are home uh, are going to work effectively for the day. Um, obviously, it's early days yet. We're only in the first week and um, we're not sure how the workflow is kind of going to affect us, but um, everybody seems to be positive. They seem to be uh, responding. And I suspect by the end of uh, either this week or early next week, all three offices are going to be 100% um, in home. Um, I suspect, like everybody else, we've had to make sure that each of the workspaces at home are generally in com compliance. Um, you've got to make sure that it's a safe work area. And uh, I think, as you, you're also saying, Claire, just where they are, are they by themselves, is the partner at home? Um, ironically, I've got a couple of people in Sydney who, um, who've who come to work because they didn't think they could be at home with their partner for an extended amount of time. So we're just trying to uh, measure that and to see how they, they cope with that as well. Um, and look, our, our other biggest thing, and I'd be interested to hear feedback, is is what, what we're doing with our clients. Um, we've got some which are happy to do the Skype or TeamViewer or Zoom. We've got others who are desperate to come in. We're, we're basically saying no. Um, we, we prefer that uh, we have the meetings via teleconference or phone, but um, I think as we've all discovered, trying to, to describe a, a scheme or a presentation uh, until we work out how... The, the, the teleconference offers he works. I mean, Zoom's quite good with some of its facets, but how others have coped with that, trying to get the, the concepts across. Um, we're working on the premise. We're still working. We've still got clients who want uh, documentation done. Uh, 
we've talked to some of the local councils, certainly New South Wales, who have said they're still accepting documentation, they're still accepting submissions. Uh, so we've just got to assume that the jobs are still there. Uh, a couple have said no. Um, a couple of clients have said, look, we're going to step back for a little while. But I'd right, be very interested to hear what, what other people's experiences are with their, with their clients and, and with council. It's, it's Chris from, and Evan from Idle Architect Studio. We're, um, we've got our whole office in here apart from one. So we've just been seeing, I guess we're expecting this to go on for a while. So we're just sort of, um, seeing how people are feeling comfortable with that. We are struggling to get, obviously, new projects off the ground. We've got quite a few in the pipeline that were imminent and people just don't want to have meetings. We're really decision-making is becoming an issue. We've done cash flow for seven, eight weeks now and we can sort of live there. Um, but we know at best case, Working from home, we think is about 80% productive in terms of normal working in the office. And given that architecture work generally benchmarked at about 20% um, profit margin, that takes us down to probably treading water for an office of about 12 people. And that's okay in this environment, we're happy with that, as long as everyone's got work and can do their jobs. But I guess it's just we see the issue in six to eight weeks or nine weeks for us is, is our biggest concern, not right now. So I don't know if anyone else sort of got the same, some, some views on that. Uh, I'll just, just to pick, pick up on that, I, I think, look, what we're finding from our side is that you know, we've had one or two sort of people that are uncomfortable in terms of um, sort of processes that we're not meeting. We've also found, I suppose it just depends on your client base, we've also found that most of our clients just really want everything now. So there's just been this huge, you know, I hate to use the word acceleration in terms of getting things out. Uh, obviously what, what's going to happen there is, you know, in a week or two, that's all going to dry up as well. But, you know, we work in the private sector a fair degree. So a lot of that is being driven by banks a lot of them are sort of saying as well, what you've started, you need to finish because it also has some value. Um, but there just seems to be, it's, it's another pandemic in itself, certainly from, from this side at the moment in terms of just we want things tomorrow and we want it the next day, etc. The other thing we're finding is there's also, and this is not government bashing, but people, a lot of the government uh, approval processes are all working at home online at the moment. And we've got a lot of keyboard warriors at the moment, sort of not obstructing because I don't like to use that word, but whether there should be one email, it's becoming 10 emails and that chain is, is just keep going. If that does, you know, if you're experiencing that or any of you experiencing that, I think that just needs to be right back to, to the authority or to the government as well, because that, you know, that also has a hindrance. So that's, that's a little bit of what's happening here as well. Just um, Chris jumping here again uh, with the uh, the cash flow that um, the idol um, Christian Idol was just talking about. Has anybody else sort of been doing their cash flows or, or seeing what their their break even or shutdown point is? Uh, I'm curious. Uh, we, we've probably got um, much the same. You know, a couple of months worth of, uh, of of buffer cash, sort of cash ahead of us, assuming everything else stops tomorrow. But um, generally interested to see where other people are, where where they're. Where we, the risk threshold is, we're we're trying to present to, um, and I don't know how you do it, but getting into the uh, the government or getting to New South Wales and saying, look, we've got problems. We've we've been talking to the ATO uh, directly about our deferring our tax. We've been talking to the payroll uh, people in New South Wales, um, trying to find out what what government is going to be doing for us, if anything, to uh, to help mitigate some of the uh, some of the outgoings. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see what the rest of the uh, rest of the country is dealing with. Just, just as Evan I think um, it's clear again here. I mean, we, we, um, I'll go. You go. I'll just, just to back up what Chris said earlier with regard to the cash flow, we probably see it being like a twofold, and, and this is where the, the speculation doesn't help. But it's, it's, we, you can forecast the cash flow for 
six, seven, eight weeks, but it's then if it keeps going on for a longer period, um, we've all probably got invoices out uh, waiting to be paid and hopefully we're kind of forecasting and hopefully we're getting like a 70 to 80% return on those invoices now. And we also know that there's a, there is some money in the bank as well. So it's, it's kind of getting to a point where that's why we think in that, in that six to eight week period, if you can, we can still do work, we've still got work to do and you can still invoice, invoice but then in that period when you're invoicing for the next, for the, for the next stage, we may see a, a much steeper decline in those invoices getting paid depending on how long it goes for. So that's probably, I'll say, just to back up um, the conversation. Yeah, I think it's clear again. I'm trying not to dominate the conversation, but um, well, yeah, some of the things we've just we've just literally gone through because, as you probably, many of you probably do, a bit like we were taught when we did our prec exams. There's that kind of um, Excel spreadsheet that really helps you work out your calculator and uh, the way you structure all your costs. And so our kind of running costs, um, you know, we're always building in what our marketing and our photography is, and what our cost and you know annual um, cost of sort of subscriptions or um licenses and hardware replacements and those kind of things. But we're really just going through and modelling what we see our actual costs to be over the next six months and what we can pull back on. You know, it's all the little things where we've kind of cancelled the milk subscription to the office and the fruit bowl and, you know, the things that we're not having to buy anymore. Um, one of the things that I was talking to someone uh, the other day um, who's a kind of sort of business advisor, she was just giving some, you know, tips, but really she was saying even going back up to all of um, you know, utility companies, phone companies, um, really kind of leaning on a lot of those um, bigger organisations to kind of, you know, often it's there's things that they can kind of um, throw in extra that don't really cost them anything. Like it might be that they give, you know, more data at the moment because we're all using a lot more or that they can um, knock off and request that they're not charging the kind of service connection fee for utility bills at the moment. Um, looking at um, obviously there's all the tax incentives at the moment um, or anyway, so they're kind of things that we're just sort of working through at the moment. I think we're in the same boat. Um, we've got probably the next couple of months seem to be okay. Um, obviously if sites close, that just cuts out a lot of the CA projects, which as everyone knows, CA doesn't really generate much income or isn't, you know, it's not a huge loss. But I think that the, the big worry is if this ends up sort of going for, you know, three months and longer um, and what the, um, the kind of strategies are to try and keep, you know, people employed and whether it's about, you know, re reducing everyone's hours to try and sort of hold on to everyone through the, t the time and avoid having to stand people down like so many other industries are having to. Well, it's Tony here again. Just to add that, well, we've virtually done the same thing. We've spoken, and, well, actually, you know, we, we have three partners, and one has actually just stepped out of that, um, the day to day at the moment, and just managing all our finances and speaking to everybody, speaking to the banks, um, speaking to, in regard to what's on offer with the ATO, how to manage all that. So, we've been lucky enough, and you know, Gary in the office has stopped doing that. The other thing we have done is, and I'm sure all of you have, we just keep the communication up with staff, okay? Uh, because they're just worried also about their jobs, etc. Mm. So, you know, we went through this, you know, with my grey hair at the moment, we've been through this a couple of times, but not as serious as this. And, um, you know, our choice was really, you know, if everybody goes to 80% or 60%, it's about sharing the load rather than making everybody redundant. We've just been up front with all of that. Um, and so everybody is just aware, as I say, everybody's got their own families and their own responsibilities. So we've got one person just managing the practice. Uh, we have the luxury of doing that at the moment. You know, we're okay for about a month, but after that, it's going to start stretching out. But just keep talking to people, keep talking to your banks, keep talking to your accountants. There is a lot of understanding of what we're finding, and certainly the other people in associated businesses that we've found. We also have clients in hospitality, which have probably been the first off the rank in terms of where they've been here. But the level of understanding is quite good. Don't lock yourself up. Speak to... Yeah. I keep saying speak, speak, speak. Communication is is really, really relevant at this time because otherwise you'll find yourself at the, uh, the back of the line. Hi, everyone. Yeah. It's Julia. And, and, and I would endorse those 
sage words from Tony. It's really good advice. There's a lot of information on our COVID-19 page about what sort of government support is out there. Um, I would suggest that you all look at what's available to you and move quickly to actually access any of those funds on a state basis that are available and also through the federal government. We'll, um, over the coming days, we'll provide sort of maybe um, heightened uh, access to those uh, and, and understanding. Uh, next week, we're planning uh, in these sessions to have an accountant and a lawyer uh, on each of the Tuesday and Thursday. So they'll be available to answer questions and give you an outline of potentially things that you can do now to actually support your business and how you actually approach it moving forward and what the long term looks like as well. Uh, and please don't hesitate to contact me and, and send me any suggestions for who you'd like to see. Um, we think it's important that we also include some peer-to-peer -peer pieces as well. And we're looking at how we actually develop a, a, a much stronger platform to enable that. So um, it is unfortunate times and exceptional times and we're, we're all in this together. So we're trying to do everything that we can from an institute perspective to support our members, to support you, to make sure that uh, it, we all come out of this together. Okay, thanks, Julia. Um, I know time is, is paramount for everybody at the moment. So does anybody have anything else they want to share or add to that? Okay, so, well, look, based on that, look, thank you, everybody. So I didn't know where the conversation was going to go today or where we were going to end up, but uh, so just keep sharing information and uh, you know, the Institute is there, I suppose, as Julia said, to sort of help and facilitate. Um, and you know, feel free to sort of email everybody out. So you know, we're, so we're all on this together, and we will we'll pull through together. And, uh, but everybody, stay safe. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Hi, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thank Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Tony. Bye. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Thank you.